Well, I will tell you first of all, I don't want to relation to any religion of the past. But we have, we, what we would need in the Constitution is a relation to God. Mm -hmm. You see, that is, would be decisive, because there the Jews, the, the Mohammedans, and we Christians could uh, pray together and uh, speak together. Uh, the poisoning of the whole situation was in the Second World War, because in the Second World War, uh, President Roosevelt, who was a great man, had one idea, and I think it was the right idea. He was very, you see, his whole political thinking was very much uh, molded by the failure of Wilson. Uh, that he did, uh, that Wilson didn't think of the, of the end of the war that the, he was leading, and then I, he tried something amateurish. And that consequently, Roosevelt was of the opinion, we should be thinking of this in an organization. But that, of course, he had the opposition of the, unfortunately, the bulk of the leading Americans. Because the leading Americans' thoughts were uh, formed, in my opinion, because that's a personal opinion, was very much formed by one of the greatest errors of American history. And that was the consequences of the war between the states. You see, after all, I still remember personally, when I first was in America, how much at that time still, now it's thank God it's, it's disappearing, but at that time still, how deep was the wounds that had been made to the southerners. What sort of uh, strong feelings still existed so long after the war was an end. Uh, the, what was the last word of reason for this? Uh, the slogan, this idiotic slogan of capitulation, unconditional capitulation. That, unfortunately, influenced the thinking of many of the leading Americans. I remember, for instance, I don't, uh, now I don't want to be indiscreet, so I won't tell you the name, but I was walking in uh, Washington one day with a, one of the highest officials of the State Department, and we uh, discussed now what to do. It was still during the war, and I said to him that I was very much against this unconditional uh, surrender, because it, opened, it, it hurt more the winner than the vanquished in the end. And consequently, the possibility of a real uh, solution was no longer given. Because if you have unconditional surrender, uh, you can't negotiate anymore. It's just the same thing, you know, this idiotic uh, thing that happens in many policies, now to execute the leaders of, of the unpleasant other side. Uh, the assassination, uh, the killing of uh, even of the Iraqi leader is a terrible error because for one thing, a dead person cannot reconcile. A dead person stops in his attitude toward the other at the moment of his death. And consequently, what we need is always to keep open and there is... No, there is no advantage in executing somebody. For instance, the hanging of Saddam Hussein was a great error, in my opinion, and we are going to pay for it, and we are going to pay for it very dearly in the future. And consequently, that was also the idea uh, of Roosevelt, who wanted to have this solution. And that is consequently, he told me that more than once, uh, he wanted to create something uh, that should be lasting. But that the beginning of this era was really the start of the Dumbarton Oaks meeting. At the Dumbarton Oaks, in which there was not just three countries represented, the United States, Great Britain, and Russia. Russia's representative at that time was Maxim Litvinov, who was no longer, no longer foreign minister, but he was still carrying on this matter. 
And it was at uh, when these three met in the Barton Oaks in Washington, uh, the first thing uh, Litvinov read was that uh, for Russia there was, for Stalin, there was an unconditional, uh, there was an absolute base condition, and that is in the past you always had a reference either to the supreme power or to, the, to God or to something like that, and uh, that he wanted to make all these ghosts of the past disappear and put man at the place of God uh, into the treaties. And that was when, for the first time, Russia demanded that there should be no mention of any supreme being. Although, it was, or in my opinion, it was absolutely erroneous also for a very, very simple reason. You can't have man among human rights uh, without God, without the last authority, because uh, to submit it to this sort of uh, changing majorities is no, no ultimate uh, authority. And consequently, it, is, it makes no possibility of, of putting something which is really the point of reference. 